In this problem, we're told a wheel rotates without friction about a stationary horizontal axis at the center of a wheel. A constant tangential force equal to 80 newtons is applied to the rim of the wheel. The wheel has a radius 0.12 meters. Starting from rest, the wheel has an angular speed of 12 revolutions per second after two seconds. What is the moment of inertia of the wheel? So there's a bunch of things here we're given, and let's just go ahead and write them down. So what are we given? So we know there's going to be a tang tangential force, right? So there's going to be some force being applied Right? And we know it's going to be perpendicular to uh, where it's being applied, right? So it's going to be uh, 80 newtons. And then we're also given that the wheel has a radius of 0.12 meters. So we have a radius of the wheel. And we know it's going to start from rest, right? So the initial angular velocity is going to be 0 radians per second, right? Because they tell us it's starting from rest. And it's going to have an angular speed of 12 revolutions per second, right? So 12 revolutions per second after time of two seconds. So we're given a bunch of things here. Uh, and let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to solve this. So we're trying to find moment of inertia, right? So we're trying to solve for I inertia. So I'm just going to say I equals question mark. So how do we want to find this? So the way I think about doing this, right? So there's a bunch of formulas, but the formula we're going to use is this one right here, which is that torque equals I alpha. And I'll tell you why or what makes me think we want to use this. So right, we're trying to solve for inertia, right? And so keep in mind what we're given. We're given a force, we're given a radius. Right? And when you're given a force, generally they want you to calculate torque. And so we can calculate torque with force and radius, meaning we have the torque part. And then in terms of angular acceleration, we're given a bunch of these rotational kinematic variables. And with these, uh, what I recognize is that we should be able to solve for alpha, meaning if we have alpha and we have T, we can solve for I. right? Because if we just divide both sides by alpha, you're going to get that I is equal to the torque, or the sum of the torque, right? but there's only one torque being applied. So it's just the one torque over the alpha. And so what I just told you is we can just solve for both of these using the stuff we're given. So that's how I recognize this is what we want to do. So let's just go ahead and start. So let's start with the torque. So what is torque? Torque equals r or radius multiplied by the force times the sine of theta, right? And so theta, essentially, it's the angle between uh, where the radius is and uh, the, the force, right? So we have a wheel like this, right? Here's our wheel. Imagine it's a circle, right? This is our center. Here's our radius. And we have a force being applied uh, 90 degrees. That's what that means, uh, right? Because it's uh, tangential, right? So it's going to be 90 degrees, meaning the angle between the force and theta, right? Yeah, so uh, this essentially is going to be 90 degrees because this is the radius and this is the force. So the angle between them is 90 degrees. And so what you should know is the sine of 90 is just 1, right? So it's really just going to be the radius times the force because if you have a force that's perpendicular, all you have to do is multiply by the radius, right? And I just showed you why. So we can just do the torque equals the radius, and we need this to be in uh, meters, which it is, right? It's given uh, 0.12 meters. And then we want to multiply that by uh, the force, and we need this in newtons, and we're given to it, uh, given to us in newtons. So it's just 80 newtons. So you just want to do 0.12 times 80. So let's just do that. So 0.12, multiply that by 80. 9.6. So 9.6, and then torque is going to be newton meters, right? So 9.6 newton meters. Now we have the torque. So we have torque. We need to solve for alpha. Right, so how do we want to solve for alpha? We want to use it or solve for it using the rotational kinematic variables, right? So we're given omega zero, omega, and t. And so the equation that pops out in my head is uh, omega equals omega zero plus a times t, right? You should know the uh, kinematic or rotational kinematic formulas. They're just like the normal ones except for with uh, rotational kinematic variables, right? Just like v equals v sub zero plus a times t. It's just all the rotational, right? Omega is just uh, angular velocity. Alpha is angular acceleration. So it's just the same. So we just got to plug it in, right? We can solve for alpha. So omega, which is 12 revolutions per second, but we got to change that uh, in a second. But we can solve for alpha, right? So let's go ahead and make sure the units are right. So t is going to be in seconds. This is in radians per second. I always write it in radians per second. And the reason that is is because all right, it's 0, but we want to make sure this is in radians per second too. And it's just a quick check. So uh, we need this to be in radians per second or else we can't solve, right? So we need to convert radians into radians. So we know that one revolution is equal to two pi radians. That's a unit, or that's a, uh, right, a conversion you should know. And so essentially two pi radians is one rev. So we can just multiply by two pi, the revolutions cancel, and we'll have radians per second. So this is just going to be two times 12 is 24. So it's just 24 pi uh, radians per second. So now we've got it in the correct units, right? So now it's in this, and we can plug it in. So it's just going to be uh, omega, which is 24 pi, equals omega 0, which is just 0. So we can ignore it, plus alpha, which we don't know, multiplied by t. 
And this is after two seconds. So uh, we have two, so we can just divide by two to solve for alpha. So it's just going to be 12 pi. All right, so 12 pi equals alpha. So, uh, right, and keep in mind the units, it's going to be, let me just rewrite it this way. So alpha equals 12 pi, and then the units are radians per second squared. So yeah, so now we've got it. Uh, what we want to do now is since we have alpha, right, we have the torque, we can solve for the inertia. So uh, we just got to plug it in now. So the in torque we calculated was 9.6 newton meters. And then on the bottom, it's 12 pi radians per second squared. So just do 9.6. You want to go ahead and divide that by 12 pi. Yeah, so when you do this, you're going to get the inertia is equal to about 2.5. 546. So I'm just going to say 2.55. And then units, uh, the formula for inertia is, uh, well, it depends on the one, but it's essentially just mass times radius squared, right? There's usually a thing out front, right? Depending on the type of object. Uh, but in this one, it's a wheel, right? So it's just one half uh, mR squared. So the units are just going to be the mass multiplied by the radius. So kilogram meters squared, but you should know that by now. So it's just going to be uh, 0.255 kilogram meters squared. Right, so this is going to be the inertia, uh, the moment of inertia of the wheel, so 0.255 kilogram meters squared. So that's your answer, and uh, yeah, hopefully you found this useful.